Okay, final video on binomial problems for year 13. Um, at the end of the last video, I left this one with you and how to find the first few terms of this expansion. And I gave two different methods of uh, ways you could get the answer. I'm gonna go through uh, the solutions now. Uh, so method one was to first consider that this is actually just a product of these three things. So the uh, 8x plus four, uh, the 1 minus x to the minus 1 and the 2 plus x to the minus 1. So I could just write that as 8x plus 4 times 1 minus x to the minus 1 times 2 plus x to the minus 1. So that's what I'm taking advantage of here, that these, these are completely equivalent. Um, so I use a binary expansion on this part. Uh, to give me the first uh, three terms there. And then I use a binomial expansion on this part with our new feature of taking out the two there to make sure there's a one there. And then that gives me this. Um, this first expansion was valid for x is less than one. And the second expansion was valid for modulus of x was less than two. Um, the more restrictive of those is this one. So this one will take precedence. Um, if you recall my last video, they both must hold uh, for the overall expansion to be valid. Um, so that gives us this, uh, so we've got the, the half from here, um, that bracket goes there, that is there, and then the 8x plus 4 as well, and times all that out, ignore anything that's higher than a quadratic, and we end up with this answer, 2 plus 5x plus 3.5x squared, and that is valid for all x uh, between minus 1 and 1, or um, modulus of x is less than 1. Uh, the alternative method I suggested using was... To use partial fractions, so we take the original fraction, we split it up into two fractions. I then equated the coefficients and got that a was 4 and b was minus 4. Therefore, this first bracket is 4 times that to the minus 1, because that's what a is. And then we got 4 times that expansion. And then finally, b is minus 4. Uh, but don't forget that one's got a, a 2 there, so I've taken the 2 out as well. Okay, so that's why it's become a minus 2. And then that leaves these terms here. Uh, the overall answer then is just the sum of them. Okay, a over 1 minus x plus b over 2 plus x. And we end up with uh, the sum of these two, which is 2 plus 5x plus 3.5x squared. Exactly as we had before uh, with method 1. Um, as you'd expect, it's just a different method, uh, but you get the same result. And again, this is valid for the more restrictive binomial case. Um, so the more restrictive one was x is between minus 1 and 1. So therefore, that is the one um, that holds for the expansion. Okay, so this video is just going to go through a very similar question. Just so you can see it a bit more in action if you did, didn't get the answer out from the previous video. And what I've got here is 20 over 2 uh, sorry 20 plus 2x all over 5 plus 2x times 4 plus x and what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, show that it's equal to this thing it's a cubic expansion that's the first four terms of the expansion uh, but I need to find the coefficients of a and b and then finally part b I'm going to find the percentage error in using the series in part a so that's this series here um, to estimate the values of f of 0.1 and f of 1, give my answer to two significant figures, and I'm going to comment on those answers. Okay, so let's let's make a start on this. Did I leave this page? I did. Good. So method number one, we'll, we'll do both methods. So method one, which I'll do in blue for consistency, we've got 20 plus 2x multiplied by 5 plus 2x to the minus 1 multiplied by 4 plus x to the minus 1. So I need to expand that, and I need to expand that. And then I need to take the product of those along with the product of the numerator. OK, so 5 plus 2x to the minus 1. If I take the 5 out, that's going to be 5 to the minus 1 into 1 plus 2 2 fifths x to the minus 1. I can now apply the binomial theory to this. I couldn't to this because that was a 5. It has to be a 1, otherwise it doesn't work. 
So that is roughly equivalent to 5 to the minus 1, which is a fifth. Um, times. So the first term is going to be nx. That's going to be minus, it's like 1 minus um, 2 fifths x. Uh, the next term is minus 1 times minus 2 divided by 2 factorial times the 2 fifths squared. Uh, so that's 4 twenty fifths. So I get plus 4 over 25x squared. And this question is requiring me to go up to the cubic term as well. So I can modify this. That's going to be a power 3. The numerator is going to be 3 factorial, which is 6. And I need also a times minus 3 in the, denom uh, in the numerator. So it's minus 8 over 125. 8 over 125x cubed. Lovely. Um, I could then bring the 5 in. So this expansion is roughly uh, a fifth minus two twenty-fifths x plus four one hundred and twenty-fifths x squared minus eight six hundred and twenty-fifths x cubed. And of course, that would carry on if I were to go further, but I'm stopping at the cubic term because the question stops at the cubic. OK, so that's the first bracket. Um, second bracket, or second expansion bracket I need to do is this one. Again, I need to pull out the 4. So I need to pull something out with this one, but that's not a problem. So I get 4 to the minus 1, and that's 1 plus x over 4 to the minus 1. Oh, by the way, this first one is valid for the modulus of 2 fifths x is less than 1, which is the modulus of x is less than 5 halves. Okay, so that's between minus 5 halves and 5 halves. Um, the 4 to the minus 1 can just stay out the front and I apply the binomial expansion to this. So that's 1 plus nx, so that's a quarter x. And then we've got n times n minus 1 divided by 2 factorial times a quarter squared. So that's a sixteenth. So plus 1 over 16x squared. And finally, the last term, uh, we're going to have that as a 3 for the cube. And the 3 I'm going to put in the bottom is actually going to cancel with the 3 on top. But I will leave it in there anyway for completion. So it's minus a 64th. So minus 1 over 64x cubed. And of course, that would carry on as the other one did. And that is roughly a quarter. Minus a 16th x plus 1 over 64x squared minus 1 over 256x cubed. Okay, cool. So now we've got all of these uh, brackets. We can now put them all together. So this is going to be 20 plus 2x into the first one, which was a fifth, minus 2 over 25x plus 4 over 125x squared minus 8 over 625x cubed times a quarter minus 1 over 16x plus 1 over 64x squared minus 1 over 256x cubed. Right, I'm going to leave that one out the front, 20 plus 2x, and I'm going to multiply all of this out. So we're going to have a fifth times a quarter, which is sort of the twentieth. Now the linear term, we're going to get a fifth times negative a sixteenth. I can't quite see the calculator. 0.2 is a, a fifth times negative a sixteenth. And then I'm also going to get a quarter times negative two twenty-fifths. So that is going to be an extra minus a fiftieth. Okay, the, the quarter times two twenty-fifths is a is a fiftieth. Um, simplify that, we're going to get thir minus 13 over 400. 13 over 400, and that's my x term. My x squared term could be from the quadratic times the, the constant, or the linear times the linear, or the constant times the quadratic. So there are three ways to do this. Um, move that up so we can see both at the same time. Uh, so we're going to get 4 125ths times a quarter, which is 
the quadratic times the constant. Uh, linear times linear. So they're both negatives, so it's going to end up being positive. So it's 2 25ths multiplied by 1 16th. And then we've got the constant times the quadratic. So that's plus 1 5th multiplied by 1 64th. And that gives me 129 8 thousandths. So it's 129 over 8 thousand. And that's the x squared term. And then I also need to go one step further as well. I need the cubic term. So there's going to be four ways to get the cubic term. So I'm going to have minus 8 over 65 times a quarter. And these are all going to be negative, actually. So I'm going to get minus 4 over 125 times a sixteenth. Minus 2 over 25 times a 64th. And then I'm also going to get sorry, minus a fifth times the 101 over 256. No, it doesn't like that as a fraction. So that's going to be negative 7.23125 times 10 to the minus 3x cubed. Brilliant. Okay, and now the last thing to do then is to multiply this cubic by this linear. So the constant term is going to be the 20 times the 20th, which is the number 1. Uh, the linear term is going to come from the 2x times the 20th. So I'm going to get 2 times 1 over 20. But I'm also going to get 20 times that. So that's going to be minus 20 times 13 four hundredths. So that's minus 11 on 20. Well, that's reassuring because if I go back to the question, I'm told the first two terms are 1 minus 0.55x, which is exactly what I've got. Okay, 11 twentieths is 0.55. So that's really reassuring uh, that those two have come out. Doesn't necessarily mean the rest is correct, but hey-ho. Um, right, the quadratic term is going to be that times that and that times that. So that's going to be 20 times 129 eight thousandths. And then we're going to get minus 2 times 13 four hundredths. So that's 103 over 400. That's x squared. And then the final term is going to be the, the cubic term, um, which is going to be that times that plus that times the uh, that number there. So we're going to get 2 times 129 eight thousandths. And we're going to get minus 20 times 7.23125 times 10 to the power. And that is 899 eight thousandths x cubed. Uh, and that's the answer. That is valid for the most restrictive binomial that we've done. So we did the first one, which was uh, x is uh, between minus 2.5 and 2.5. This one, we need the modulus of x on 4 to be less than 1, which means the modulus of x is less than 4. So this is more restrictive. So this is valid between minus 2.5, oh, sorry, not including 2.5, uh, x and 2.5. Yeah. It doesn't include um, the bounds. It is strict. There's a point there. Um, alternatively, the modulus of x is less than 5 halves. Okay. Same thing, uh, because we're only in the real numbers. OK, so that's um, one method. I do want to do the other method as well. I do think the other method in this case uh, gives the maths a little bit, um, a little bit easier. Uh, so we had 20 plus 2x, and that was all divided by 5 plus 2x into 4 plus x. And the other method says, okay, well, we're going to split it out into partial fractions. So that's going to be something over 5 plus 2x plus something else over 4 plus x. And a bit of partial fraction wizardry, and we end up with, I've got the answer here, so I'm just going to cheat. If you want partial fraction help, then go check out uh, my other videos on partial fractions. 
I got A is minus 4. Um, nope. I swapped them around. A is 10, and B is minus 4. Okay. Um, so rather than expanding this and doing three products together, um, I've now just got two things. Um, to get from here to here, you, you've got to do a bit of maths, so that's obviously not in the other method. So pros and cons. Um, so rather than expanding this, I'm going to expand this. So it's 10 over 5 plus 2x minus 4 over 4 plus x. And what I can do is I can divide top and bottom by 5 to give me 2 over 1 plus 2 fifths x minus 1 over 1 plus a quarter x. So I just need to look at these two separately and then subtract one from the other. So the top one, we've got 2 into 1 plus 2 fifths x to the minus 1. Okay, I've already, uh, there's, there's already a 1 there, which is why I've divided by 5 top and bottom here to make sure that was a 1, so I can just apply the binomial theorem straight away. Uh, that is roughly 2 into 1 plus nx plus n. Uh, so n is minus 1 times n minus 1 divided by 2 factorial times 2 fifths squared. So that is 4 twenty fifths. And then the next one, that's going to turn to a cubed. That's times 3, and now I've got times minus 3 at the top. So it's minus 8 over 1, 2, 5. x cubed. And of course that would carry on. Um, so that's roughly 2 minus 4 fifths x plus 8 over 25 x squared minus 16 over 125 x cubed and so on. And that is valid for the modulus of x is less than 2.5. The other one is 1 plus a quarter x to the minus 1. So that is 1 plus nx, so that's a quarter x. n times n minus 1 is positive 2. Divided by 2 is just 1 plus x squared. So that's plus 1 over 16x squared. And the next term is going to be negative 3 over, th uh, sorry, negative 6 over 3 factorial, which is negative 1, times a quarter cubed. So that's minus 64th x cubed. And then my final answer is the first minus the second. So I need to do the first expansion, subtract the second expansion. Um, so therefore, 20 plus 2x divided by 5 plus 2x times 4 plus x is roughly uh, 2 minus 1, which is 1, minus 4 fifths minus minus a quarter. So be, just be careful with your signs. Minus 4 fifths. Minus minus is plus, that's a quarter. So that's minus 11 over 20. Again, reassuring, because that was in the question. Uh, the quadratic term is 8 twenty fifths subtract a sixteenth, which is 103 four hundredths. This is looking good, because these are the same numbers that we got in the previous method. And then we've got minus 16 120 fifths. Uh, plus, so subtract the negative, is plus uh, 1 over 64. 899, 8 thousandths. X cubed. Um, yeah, so there we go. There, there, there's, um, there's both methods there. Uh, you can see in action. You can choose your favourite. Uh, sometimes a question will guide you through one or the other, um, but if it just asks you to expand it, then it doesn't matter which you use. Okay, just back to the question, there was a part B. Uh, find the percentage error at 0.1 and 1, give me answers to 2 sig fig. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to make a little table. Um, that's the best way to, to visualise this. Um, so we've got my different x values, which were 0.1 and 1. And I'm going to find the approximate values, which is plugging in x into the cubic here. Uh, the true values, 
which is plugging in X into the original fraction, and then I'm going to calculate the percentage error. Um, percentage error is a calculation which can come up in A level every now and again. Um, the percentage error is equal to, as an absolute, is the approximation subtract the true value divided by the true value times 100. Okay, that will give you uh, the percentage error uh, as an absolute. Okay, so how far away are we from the true solution? So I'm just going to jump into table mode, actually. Um, I think that's probably going to be the easiest. Um, so my function is going to be 1 minus 0.55x plus 103 x squared minus 899 eight thousandths. Uh, x cubed, and that should be over 400, apologies. Oh, oh no. Right, put it at the end. Yeah, there we go. Um, over 400, there we go. Um, and another function would be this one, which is going to be 20 plus 2x. And I'm going to divide that by 5 plus 2x multiplied by 4 plus x. So what the calculator is going to do is it's going to plug in my x values, which I'll define in a minute, into both of these functions at the same time. So it'll just give me both answers. I want to set, I'm going to start at 0.1, I want to finish at 1, and I want to move to the steps of 0.9. So it's just going to calculate the x values that I'm interested in. You can do the same thing on the, the cheaper Casios, um, rather than the graphical. Um, they, they have a facility to do two functions at once as well. Um, so let's have a look at these answers. Here we go. Oh, it look, even gives a derivative on this one. I don't care about that derivative. Okay, so the top one uh, was the approximation. Uh, y1 was the approximation and y2 was the true. So the approximation... Um, I put this. Let's do that there. The approximation for 0.1 is 0.9474626625. And the approximation for an x is 1 was 0.595125. True value, however, was 0.9474761167. Uh, for x is 0.1. And 22 30 fifths. Um, which is 0.628571428. Um, so that's that's the four values that the calculator gives me. Much, I think that's much easier than typing them all in manually. Um, and now to calculate the percentage error, we just use uh, this formula here. Um, so that's a prox minus true divided by true times 100. Uh, ignoring the negative. So 0 0.94, I'm just going to type in the full calculator display here. Um, I could have saved them as numbers, but I haven't done that. So 94746767 divided by 0 0.94746767 uh, times 100. And that is um, 0 0.000479 or 48. So very, very, very small error, very small error. Uh, in other words, this approximation is very accurate uh, when x is 0.1. I should expect, because um, x cubed um, is already in the thousandths, um, x to the 4 is going to be even smaller. It's going to be in the tens of thousandths. Um, so very, very small um, effect it's having on the overall result. So truncating it from here, we're not actually losing very much. Whereas with the, when x is 1, the expansion is still valid because the expansion was valid for when x is less than uh, 2.5. Didn't actually finish that up here. x is less than 4 for that one. Um, so the most restrictive one was modulus of x is less than 2.5. So that's the one that it's valid for. Um, so 1 is within that range, so it's still valid. Uh, approximation, 0.595125. Subtract the true, 0.62857142826. Divided by the true, 0.62857142826 times 100. And that is 
5.3%. Okay, so a much bigger percentage error, as you'd expect. I mean, we are a factor of 10 further away from zero. Zero is the only place where the percentage error will be zero. Um, so we, we would expect the error to go up. And we can see it has uh, significantly, but 5% is still a very good approximation. Um, it's just not as accurate as it was before. So the concluding comments, X is 0.1 led to a better approximation. And that would be because 0.1 is closer to zero. Okay. These expansions are always perfect when X is zero. Um, and they approximate when X is uh, close to zero. Okay. Um, that's it for final expansions. Um, Hopefully you've uh, benefited from these videos and if you have any questions then just drop them in the comments. Uh, thanks for watching.